the first one uh, that I would mention as an interesting trend is the movement towards more immersive and interactive learning. Now we've been on that path for a while, but now that you are seeing uh, game-like environments, which are really deep experiential learning spaces, it takes it to an entirely new level. And it begins to capitalize, not just on what technology can do, but how technology can be inseparable from the person and yielding um, much bigger returns in terms of learning. It gets to something called fluid intelligence, where you learn through problem solving, you change the heuristic, you have to get new information, you have to work with other people. So I think the ability to do this immersive and interactive learning is at a whole new level. But right with that goes the assessment that comes from doing that online. And I think that will change everything because it's not just end of course assessment, it's not just test assessment, it's ongoing formative assessment that really helps shape the learner and the learning environment. A second technology that I would mention, I think is uh, around analytics. We've seen huge growth in analytics and there keeps turning over a new leaf. So in the student support arena, we now have a lot of new systems around integrated planning and advising systems with case management approaches. We've got um, graduation uh, systems that are all about having the right pathway for students to get through their degree program, dashboards that allow the student, the instructor, and the institution to know where they are, early alert systems, uh, all kinds of support systems that are actually reducing the time to degree. And if you reduce the time to degree for students, you reduce the cost. And that's the number one complaint about higher education. Final trend that I would mention is around credentialing. And I think it all relates to the fact that you learn throughout your entire life. There's not a single learning experience. They all go together. And formal learning, informal learning, work learning can all begin to come together. So earlier on, we did a lot more with instructional systems. We've been doing work on support systems. But now people are thinking about how you redesign credentials. So it's not a static diploma so that it's a credential that follows you through life, integrates all the things that you know, and that could totally transform the system. So for traditional institutions, I would be asking the question, how can I make this technology environment support the other things that I do to enhance learning, to deepen engagement, to give me a heads up on things that are happening? When you think about engagement, that may be really what we're driving for in using technology. Doesn't matter whether the engagement is face-to-face, -face, doesn't matter whether it's online, doesn't matter whether it's through email or social media. It's really when you get very engaged with people, with the institution, with the subject matter that you learn, you uh, develop that deep sense of belonging. And so if institutions thought about how they engage, whether it's students, or the community, I think they would enhance their overall reputation. So one of the pieces of advice would be to think about technology in multiple stages. There's always the support side, the back end, the stuff you don't see, the databases, the networks. There's also sort of a back office, the support system, and there's the the face-to-face -face or the customer facing. So another way of phrasing that is you've got the on stage, you've got backstage, and you've got support. And I think one of the things that colleges and universities might do is think about all three of those and how they're interconnected, how the data flows, how we make decisions, how we connect all of those environments to really enhance the institution. You can't do one without the others. So it's the integration. The thing I hear talked about most often that I think is very positive is that CIOs say they are now being asked to be co-creators with others in the institution around the future, around the strategy, around where they are going to go. IT touches everything 
in the institution. It's involved with business processes. It's involved with getting all the work of the organization done so that the other programmatic efforts will shine. So rather than just being the CIO and responsible for information or IT, it's now becoming integrated with all of the operations of the institution. So that may be a path of evolution for the CIO role. The emphasis needs to be on engagement because that is what brings value to people, whether it's in a learning environment, whether it's in a relationship, um, whether it's in engaging your alumni so they stay close to the institution. The digital part of it is to remind us that engagement doesn't just happen when you come to campus, when you go to a football game, when you sit in a classroom, that there are many ways to engage and having digital capabilities allows you to go to those places. Think about the social world that we all live in, where we're texting and tweeting all the time. That's a way of engaging. And many times when we think about institutions, we don't think about that digital element. And so the point is to remind us that engagement is not just a face-to-face -face paradigm. It's something that can take place online, with mobile, with individuals, with large groups of people. And the larger that engagement, the greater its power. And digital allows us to have engagement we can't have with the physical alone. So IT, I think, can usher in the next phase of education um, by understanding that technology fundamentally changes people's expectations and experiences. We don't do things the same way. And if you can help people understand that and adapt to that, uh, I think you can move education forward. So imagine um, haptic devices, you know, the um, hologram uh, kind of experience. We can now do that with people. And if technologists can help us change the expectation that education is going to have that kind of interface rather than just a lecture or just a keyboard, that would be massive. I think another way that technologists can change what happens in education is by helping people understand that there are millions of learners and contributors connected out there. When you understand that learning is not confined to people on campus, to people in country, to people in your age group, you really have the ability to do service in radically different ways.